Good evening. As chairman of the Hartford Board of Education, I hereby call to order the March 19, 2019 regular meeting. I wish to extend a warm welcome to everyone present and to our television viewers. The board, superintendent, and I are pleased that you have joined us as we celebrate achievement, review information, and make policy decisions related to the effective operation of the Hartford Public Schools. This is a regular meeting, and all items that will be discussed or voted on this evening have been posted as required by state law. As the Hartford Board of Education, we are here to set goals, listen to reports of the superintendent, approve budgets, contracts, and personnel appointments, and make policy for the district. We are not here to make management decisions or solve the problems of individuals. Management is the responsibility of the superintendent. The monthly meetings of the board are open to the public. They are the time when the board conducts its business of governing the school system in a public arena. The regular meetings are not meetings with the public. Therefore, comments from the audience will be confined to the time designated for the public to address the board. Decorum and courtesy are important elements in effective public meetings. Please silence your cell phones or communication devices and refrain from talking while others are speaking. Since it is legally mandated that proceedings be accurately recorded, I may have to ask for order periodically should noise begin to interfere with our recording capabilities. I am pleased that you have taken the time this evening to join us. We are very proud of this school system and thank you for your interest in the Hartford Public Schools. Now Mr. Hernandez will read this in Spanish. Buenas noches. El presidente de la Junta de Educación de Hartford ha llamado a orden esta reunión ordinaria de la Junta de, del 19 de marzo 2019. Damos una calidad bienvenida a todas las personas presentes y a nuestros televidentes. La Junta y la superintendente, oh my goodness, se complacen que se han unido a nosotros para celebrar logro revisar información y tomar decisiones relacionadas con el funcionamiento efectivo de la Escuela Pública de Hartford. Esta es una reunión ordinaria y todos los asuntos que serán discutidos o votados en esta tarde han sido notificados como la requiere, requiere la ley estatal. Como Junta de Educación de Hartford estamos aquí para establecer metas escuchar los informes de la superintendente, aprobar los presupuestos, contratos y nombramiento de, de personal y establecer normas para el distrito. No estamos aquí para tomar decisiones administrativas o resolver problemas individuales. La administración es la respon responsabilidad de la superintendente. Las reuniones mensuales de la Junta están abiertas al público con el momento, son el momento en que la Junta lleva a cabo, a cabo su tarea de gobernar el sistema escolar en un espacio público. Las reun, reuniones regulares no son reuniones con el público, por lo tanto los comentarios de la audiencia se limitarán al tiempo designado para el público dirigirse a la Junta. El decoro y la cortesía son elementos importantes en reuniones públicas eficaces. Por favor, silencie sus teléfonos celulares o dispositivos de comunicación y absténganse de hablar mientras otros están hablando. Ya que es mandato legal de que los pre, uh, procedimientos sean grabados con precisión, es posible que tengamos que pedir orden periódicamente si el ruido interfiere con nuestras capacidades de grabación. Nos complace que se haya tomado el tiempo esta tarde para unirse a nosotros. Estamos muy orgullosos de este sistema escolar y le damos gracias por su interés en la Escuela Pública de Hartford.
We as the board, in a collaboration with the superintendent and district leadership, are committed to cultivating a culture of excellence at all levels of HPS. We thank you for taking the time to attend tonight's board meeting. We appreciate you coming out to learn more about Hartford Public Schools and for sharing your thoughts and concerns. We have established a protocol to track and respond concerns raised. We want you to know that we take your concerns seriously and to that end, we will have staff available for immediate follow-up if follow-up is required. After you have finished speaking, a staff member will come up to you ready to take your information down. They will follow up with an update within 48 hours. As a reminder, you have three minutes to speak. At the two minute mark, Ms. Santiago will ring the bell letting you know that you have one minute left. At the second bell, please wrap up your comments. Now, <laughs> now Mr. Hernandez will read this in Spanish. Nosotros, la Junta de Educación, en, colo en colaboración con la superintendente y personal del distrito, estamos comprometidos a cultivar una cultura de excelencia en todos los nive niveles de la escuela pública de Hartford. Le agradecemos que se haya tomado el tiempo para asistir a la, a la reunión de la Junta esta noche. Le agradecemos su participación. Y su, des y su deseo de aprender más sobre la escuela pública de Hartford y también por compartir sus pensamientos y preocupaciones. Nosotros tomamos sus preocupaciones muy seriamente y hemos establecido un protocolo para el, se el seguimiento y respuesta a in inquietudes planteadas. Tenemos personal disponible para segui se uh, seguimiento y mi inmediato para los casos que lo requieren. Una vez que usted haya terminado de hablar, un miembro de personal estará disponible para tomar su información. Esa persona investigará su caso y comunicará con usted dentro de 48 horas. Le recordamos que tienen tres minutos para hablar. Cuando han pasado dos minutos, la señorita Santiago sonará el timbre dejándole saber que, la que, que le queda un minuto. Al segundo sonido, por favor, termine sus comentarios. Para aquellos que necesiten traducción en español, tenemos un miembro de personal disponible para eh, ayudarlo. ¿Puede levantar la mano, por favor? As I was saying, for those who might need a uh, Spanish language translation, we do have a staff member ready to help you. And Mr. Hernandez? Sure, first on the list, um, Michael Downs. Evening board members and superintendent. Uh, Michael Downs, 74 Rosemont Street, Hartford, Connecticut. Um, first thing I wanted to address is the uh, close, closing of uh, uh, the High School Inc. and uh, Journalism and Media Academies. Um, I'm just assuming then that the, you're confident that the uh, Weaver High School project will be completed by September. Um, I heard some nasty rumors that it might not be, but uh, we'll go with it that it's going to be completed. Um, also, uh, my, uh, I have some members of my union and I uh, we're going to be um, looking to attend some legislative, uh, the uh, education legislative committee hearings uh, to be uh, uh, to, to be held this uh, spring because we're still looking for the money that was taken from the school system by eliminating the of uh, vocational technical uh, education, the middle school system, the, uh, uh, the family consumer science, culinary librarians, social workers, uh, phys physical education, art, music, um, and uh, gu guidance counselors and social workers, etc. And uh, the only thing that seems to be coming back are the uh, the middle school system. Uh, but that was quite a bit of money. We're talking hundreds of millions of dollars, and and um, uh, the money was taken by the state. It was taken initially by the State Board of Trustees, and um, 
So we think that that's where the money is, most of it. Uh, and uh, the, it's due to, up to the state to uh, return that money to us. And we're going to go to the, these um, legislative hearing, uh, hearings to uh, let people know, let the state people know that we don't have these are things that are missing from our school system and aren't missing from other school systems. Um, also, uh, in uh, November, I addressed the uh, board concerning the need for more substitute teachers. Um, we have, uh, uh, so the, the end of the college uh, school year is uh, coming to an end, or it's, and this is uh, another couple of months, and kids will be getting out of college. Now, not everybody has a job. They talk about jobs. Well, there's a lot of part-time jobs out there. And uh, a good part-time job uh, is, is good for a resume is, uh, is that of a substitute teacher for a year or two. So uh, maybe we could send some group of people out there to these colleges, especially the ones in the Hartford area, to bring, stu uh, bring these uh, students into uh, uh, with their bachelor's degrees and uh, obtain positions with it as a substitute teacher in the city of Hartford. And uh, finally, um, <laughs> I know who eight members of the Board of Education are. Uh, there's supposed to be nine members. I don't know who the ninth member is. I hope someone will be able to uh, <laughs> enlighten me on that uh, subject. Uh, if I don't find out, I'll have to guess I'll go to the council and the mayor. Thank you. Uh, next up is uh, Brother Kelvin Lovejoy. Good evening. Uh, greetings to the uh, board members of the uh, Hartford Board of Education. My name is Brother Calvin X. Lovejoy. I'm a resident of Hartford, parent, community organizer here in our city. I'm here today to speak very briefly about the quality of education. Uh, I was here in January, and so this is a continuation. Uh, especially focused on the reading and math scores for the past two years, and the low proficiency amongst the children of Hartford. Um, our children are our greatest resources that we have here as citizens in this city. Today, while I was facilitating a training for a group uh, of young adults, uh, 18 to 25 year old, I had to explain to them uh, the reality of the school to prison pipeline and the disproportionate way that the school to prison pipeline is negatively impacting black and brown children here in our city. I had to continue and explain to them and help them to understand how the pipeline and where the pipeline begins and how it starts with the lack of quality education. With that said, I ask rhetorically if you have visited the website uh, Weaver 2019. Uh, this website contains the 27 recommendations uh, for the new Weaver High School to open later this year. I ask again rhetorically, have you seen these uh, recommendations and have they been reviewed by the board for consideration? Lastly, I uh, will say that these comprehensive recommendations uh, need to be taken under consideration for quality outcomes, not only at Weaver, but across the city of Hartford as it pertains to raising the level and quality of education for our children. Please view the website. Again, that is www.weaver2019.com. Uh, what you will find um, are the inputs from the community as it regards school climate, family and community engagement, student-centered learning, and partnerships with higher education and industry. Thank you. <clears throat> Next up is uh, Jason Ferguson. Ferguson. Okay. Hello, hello. Uh, my name is Jason Ferguson. Uh, Hartford resident, proud Weaver High School alum, uh, graduating class of 1999. Our 20th anniversary will be this year, and uh, I'm worried about the uh, 
a lot of things. One of the things is the physical component of the building. Uh, I wasn't able to make the tour of the building that was last week. Number one, because the uh, information provided to the public was late and the tour of the building is during working hours for parents and people in the community felt that was disrespectful. Uh, I think it should have been held at 4.30 or 5.30, and it shouldn't be limited to a number of community individuals who have uh, a stake, or, or community individuals and stakeholders who uh, provide a lot of blood, sweat, and tears um, to be involved in that process to view the school. Uh, again, uh, I was told based on that, uh, that tour that it was a lot of things that were eliminated from the program based on um, some budget cuts. Uh, I was also informed that the neighborhood component of the schools was the area that received the majority of the cuts, that the other component of that building uh, received everything they needed. Again, uh, that's uh, one of the things that I want to place on record. Again, uh, Brother Lovejoy spoke of Weaver, www.weaver2019.com. It's a website that I believe all board members should take a, a hard look at all the recommendations the community, parents, stakeholders put together. Uh, the only thing that's consistent about Weaver High School is the passion and drive for Weaver High School, the steering committee that's, com um, that's place of stakeholders. The only changing process, only changing thing that occurred during that Weaver process is the board members, is the superintendent, and the mayor. Those are the only things that constantly change. We have been consistent. We wanted to be at the table. We uh, asked for transparency regarding the dollar amounts, regarding the Hartford Building Committee that meets monthly in the library. They talk about every dollar, cents, nickel, coin involved in every Hartford school construction project, painting, new buildings, renovations, all right? I've been asking for details on dollar amounts for Weaver High School, that's an FOI. It's okay, I, I request thousands of pages of information. However, but when I ask people within the city, on the board, what have you, what do they know about the Hartford School Building Community? They know nothing. And I think it's sad that people who we entrust our, our information about how the dollar's being spent across the city and the district, that these people who sit on certain boards, who sit on multiple boards, this board and the other board, don't have a clue. And I ask that we uh, take another look at that recommendations about, because we use those recommendations not only for Weaver, but ground zero for the whole entire district. If a board member hasn't seen it, if you didn't receive those recommendations based on the communication we have, they're supposed to be handed from the committee to the superintendent to the board. If you didn't receive it, I ask that you go look for it yourselves. We are not wasting any more time going through a pro, uh, 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 the line of communication that we were told that we we're gonna be able to have. I was told, and I agree this, if you're not at the table, you are the meal. The community just doesn't trust individuals on the board. We don't trust HPS. We don't trust the city. We are sick and tired. And for those individuals that we voted in, we're not asking for you to help us. We demand you to come and help us. We put you in those seats, and you can be replaced. Please remember that. It's voting season. We all know that there's going to be some individuals walking around the city, going to every community meeting, asking for your vote. I'm not, don't ask me for my vote. I need um, uh, solid resolutions about Weaver High School. I need solid resolutions about MLK. That MLK fence came up late. It's supposed to be up earlier. It's gonna be another delay in that process. We need to be forthright on transparency of communication, right? The community is not gonna sit by in any one of these schools waiting for you to help us. We need you all here and we're not demanding your help, we want your help. So part of this communication is, when I go back to my seat, I'm gonna have some, hopefully I'm gonna have somebody from HPS take my email down and answer my questions within the next 48 hours. That concludes public comment. And give it to Christina. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we move on to reports. And first on is the chairman's report, and an item that just came to me before the board meeting. Uh, our colleague, Tiffany Glanville, has resigned from the board. She is moving out of Hartford, and thus no longer qualifies to be a member uh, of this board, and she has resigned effective today. Uh, this month, we reorganized board committees. 
Most of the board's work is done at the committee level. At our monthly committee meetings, we receive reports from senior staff on various aspects of the district's work. There are opportunities for us to learn, ask clarifying questions, monitor the implementation of the DME, review contracts and new initiatives. We often share ideas and engage in problem solving, but committee meetings are not management meetings. Management is the responsibility of the superintendent. So board committees do not issue directives to staff. They do offer recommendations to the board and the superintendent. Following are the standing committees and their composition. The Financing Audit Committee deals with matters pertaining to the development and recommendation of the school system budget, review and maintenance of financial forecasts, and monitoring of financial affairs of the Board of Education, including contracting practices, budget allocations, and expenditures in the school system audit. Uh, the chair of the committee will be Ms. Kim Oliver, and members are Shante Browdy, Julio Flores, and Craig Stalling. Family and Community Engagement Committee reviews and assesses indicators of parent and community engagement practices, reviews the results of an annual customer satisfaction survey, reviews and assesses constituent service reports. The committee works closely with the appropriate staff to monitor the functioning of school governance councils, as well as establish and monitor policies and processes that promote more effective engagement between families, schools, students, the board, our uh, partners, and the system. Uh, the chair of that committee is Ms. Shante Browdy, and members are Juan Hernandez, Craig Stallings, and Karen Taylor. School Choice and Facilities Committee focuses on areas of facilities, master planning, school design and redesign, construction and maintenance, public use of facilities, uh, attendance area studies, transportation, state and federal legislation that inspect, impact school facilities, enrollment and equity. Uh, Karen Taylor will be chair, Aisha Clark uh, and Juan Hernandez will be members. Uh, the policy committee is responsible for the review of all policies and recommendations or revisions for Board of Education policies. The committee monitors the implementation of board policies, continues to stay abreast of local, state and federal laws and regulations to determine and apply implications for Hartford Public Schools, policy development and revisions. Uh, Aisha Clark will be the chair. T uh, Kim Oliver and Karen Taylor are members. Uh, the Teaching and Learning Committee advises the Board of Education on matters relating to teaching and learning, including instructional programs used in district schools and their relevance and alignment to the local context and professional development for the staff. The committee monitors and assesses support programs that are part of the teaching and learning experience such as special education, support for English learners, social work, and guidance services. Mr. Juan Hernandez, Chair, Shante Browdy, Julio Flores, and Craig Stallings, members. Uh, the Human Resources Committee is different from other committees. This committee meets to hear cases in which employees have appealed their termination, usually through non-renewal of contracts. Uh, Julio Flores, Chair, members, Aisha Clark, uh, Kim Oliver. And uh, I had Tiffany Glanville on a lot of committees, but obviously she's no longer with us. Uh, in addition to board committees, we have representation at several partner organizations. Uh, we are or soon will be members of CAPE, the Kinetic Association uh, Boards of Education, which provides research, professional development opportunities for board members. And it's a place where member organizations work together on educational issues that are common across all districts and also on developing legislative agendas as relates to education, and the represent there would be myself. Correct, the Central Regional Educational Center is a magnet school operator, and also an educational service provider to districts in Central Connecticut. The Correct Council consists of representatives from the boards of school districts served by Craig, and our representative will be Kim Oliver. The Hartford P Public Library is an important academic partner. And given that both the library and the school district are experiencing serious financial constraints, we have been working together to develop partnerships in which uh, we may offer joint services to the public and share resources. And Karen Taylor continues as our representative there. The Hartford School Building Committee is a partnership between the City of Hartford and Hartford Public Schools. 
It manages all cap capital projects once they have been approved by the proper authorities. Consists of three members appointed by the City Council, three members appointed by the Board of Education, and a seventh member elected by the six appointed members. Uh, our representatives will be myself, Craig Stallings, and Dr. Tote Rodriguez. And we will also have alternates, uh, designees. Uh, the membership in the Hartford School Building Committee will be part of our consent agenda because it requires a board to vote. And that concludes my report. I read the report of the superintendent. Madam Superintendent. Can, can I really quickly, Mr. Yeah. Chair, um, can you also announce the fact that those external committees will be submit, submitting written, I can, uh, so these external partner uh, committees, uh, CABE, CRAC, Hartford Public Library, Hartford School Building Committee will also submit monthly written updates going forward to the Board of Ed as well. Yes, and, and one other thing in relation to that is that we will be including all the committee reports as part of the package that you can pick up when you come into the meetings. Uh, because being that we're trying to control the time of our meetings, we no longer read our committee reports aloud. Now, Madam Superintendent. Thank you, Chairman Flores. Good evening, everyone. Um, so I'm actually going to start uh, the report with celebrations. Um, it is something that um, we're hoping is happening throughout all of our schools. This is a very challenging time of the year. Um, where we, you know, all begin to feel extra overwhelmed, and so we're trying to be very intentional to celebrate, especially the little things. So today, at, at the beginning of my report, um, I'd like to acknowledge student achievement in athletics. Um, our student athletes at the middle and high school level recently closed out uh, their winter sports season, and I'd like to congratulate our faculty managers, our coordinators, coaches, officials, volunteers, uh, our staff, our administrators, I see some here today, and of course our families and our student athletes who tirelessly, uh, tirelessly represented uh, Harford during their interscholastic competition year-round. We recognize you, we appreciate all that you do. So tonight, um, we'd like to recognize and highlight student athlete achievement at the middle school level. So I would like to ask uh, Nicole Porter, our uh, district athletics operation manager, to join us. Hello. Okay. Good evening. Good. Fine. Thank you, um, to Madam Superintendent, and to the Board of Education. I do feel the privilege to be here to honor our student athletes, our families, our coaches, our administrators, all of the aforementioned people that you mentioned. All right. This is better. Thank you. So again, good evening, and I am the operations manager for Harper Public Schools. And it's my honor to present some awards tonight some, to some very distinguished people in our middle school um, athletic league. Um, I did want to take an opportunity not to only shout out the uh, schools that are here tonight, mm -hmm. but I did also want to take this moment to acknowledge the schools that did participate, excuse me, in the Hartford Middle School Athletic League for the winter season. Uh, those schools are B STEM, West Middle, Renzulli, Sand, Milner, Canelli, McDonough, Global, Naylor. Oh, and the list goes on. Belize, MD Fox, Capital Prep, and our friends at Jamoki. So thank you all very much. Thank you to the administrators who uh, made the allowance to have sports in your schools. We do recognize it is tough, but we really appreciate you doing that. I would also, again, like to thank the superintendent for providing this platform for athletics programs and initiating our inaugural Superintendent Athletic Achievement Awards. It speaks volumes uh, to not only the commitment to improving school culture in Hartford Public Schools, but also the importance of athletics in the classroom, in our schools, and also in the community at large. So tonight we will be presenting awards to our middle school coaches, coordinators, and championship teams. I kindly ask, please, the board, if you may, to stand as uh, you will be uh, receiving our honorees tonight and also have a brief photo op. This way, thank you. So honorees, no problem. Honorees, when I do call your name, I'm kindly asking you 
um, to stand um, and come up to the stage and uh, stand in front of our board. So now for our awards presentation. So the Hartford Middle School Athletic League recently had their first vote for Coach of the Year for Boys and Girls and Coordinator of the Year. Both coaches and coordinator of the year were voted by principals and their peers. The requirement was for them to vote and state why this distinguished person deserved this honor. Before I call their names, I will read some excerpts of the comments. Dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. so I'm not gonna reveal the name. This person uses sports as a tool to connect with students on and off the court. This person is also a great role model to these young ladies by leading by example, the winning attitude these young ladies exhibit shows school pride and a great leader behind him. His dedication goes above and beyond school. This person is relentless when it comes to caring for our children and in and on the basketball, on and off the basketball court. This coach has, has played a constant and vital role in our student athletes' lives. He's looked up to uh, by our students tremendously. This coach is Louis Burgos from Canelli. <laughs> Mr. Burgos, please stand. So in honor of our first inaugural superintendent coaches award, I would like to present this to you. Thank you very much. The next award recipient it's not all about winning for him. He tries his best to teach life lessons, and as the season goes on, he helps them. He even dresses like a real NBA coach to show the kids and adults how it's done. He is selfless. Coach provides positive motivation for the kids on and off the court. He even keeps a pile of practice shorts handy for our kids who can't afford them. He's amazing. This person works extremely hard and is dedicated to all the boys he works with. His support for each youngster is unending, and while he encourages each child to maximize his potential, he also has high standards and expectations for them all. This person is Coach Dennis Anicelli from SAND. This next person we would like to honor is for Coordinator of the Year. Again, all these folks were voted on by their peers. OMG, what can I say about this guy? He is one of my favorite people on earth. He's the reason behind all of my coaching success. He's been there for the kids as far as developing them since he was a kid himself. He is a true leader and has a great example of what a coach in AD is all about full of joy, passion, and drive for the city of Hartford. I love this dude, hands down. Thanks for all you do. Another comment. This person is extremely responsive and easy to get a hold of. He sets an amazing example for his players and portrays awesome sportsmanship to all. This person is all about the kids, willing to help at all times, and also loves to collaborate with schools that will be beneficial. This person is Tim Cheever. Yeah. Thank you. You got, it. you got it. So again, I would like to thank our uh, Girls Coach of the Year for the Hartford Middle School Athletic League, Mr. Louis Burgos. Also our Boys um, Coach of the Year for the Hartford Middle School Athletic League. Mr. Dennis Anicelli, and then also our Winter Coordinator of the Year for the Hartford Middle School Athletic League, Mr. Tim Cheevers. And we would also like to thank the administrators 
for each of these schools who helped see the importance of not only having some really great folks to help our kids in athletics, but also the foresight to make sure that we keep athletics in our schools. So thank you very much. Next, I would like to also present um, our championship team presentation. So do I have Capital Prep and do I have MLK in the house tonight? <laughs> Excellent. So this past Monday, um, not past Monday, but last week, we actually had our Middle School Athletic League City Championship. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank some of the folks who made that happen. Obviously, all of our principals and ADs and deans, SPOs, our facilities team, our food services team, our custodians, our executive assistants, our behavioral techs, our teachers. If I missed anyone, I do apologize, but it really is a team effort, and that's no pun. Um, we would also like to thank our community partners who help with this, Lynx Media, DJ Monster P, who spent some really nice music during our championship. We had Ron L. Mons, who provided awesome announcements um, during the game, and we had Ashawn Event, who also did that. We would also like to thank our whole school at SMSA, um, Principal Colon, and uh, the faculty athletic director there, um, Ms. Heidi Schmidt. And we would also like to thank the custodial staff there as well. And last but not least, I would like to thank our interns. We have some Hartford Public Schools interns here. We partner very closely with our career development team. And uh, every season, we're all able to get some. And I have one gentleman here tonight. Can you please stand up, sir? His name is Mr. Uh, Daniel Warren. He's from Classical. And he helped to make sure we had a great night that night. So as I call your names, I understand not everyone is here tonight, but we do have a good bulk of you. I have some awards. And again, these are the inaugural Superintendent Athletic Achievement Awards. We will be presenting them to you. We will give them to your coach following your names being called. I kindly ask that you walk up to the stage and get your photo out. You deserve it. So, oh, thank you. I have Jenea Grant, Capital Prep Magnetory School. Savannah Fulton, Morgan Elmore, Sania Walford, Kamani White, our MVP of the game, Janaya Anderson, Andrea Green, Cassian Montanez, Anaya Hamilton, Janice Portis, Anaya Simmons, Amory Mickens, Anaya Kinsey, and the team manager, J.C. Kaluskas. This team was coached by Coach Thomas Allen. So we want to thank all of the team members. If you guys could kindly walk up to the stage, don't be bashful. All right. Nope, stand up there and get your moment. Take your picture. Take your picture. Take one step down so that they can see the picture. Yep. So here are your 2019 Harper Middle School Basketball City Champions, Capital Prep Magnetory School. Preparatory Magnet School, sorry. Uh, we would be remiss if we did not mention uh, those who actually helped. Uh, the students get to where they are, and we would like to honor Coach Thomas Allen with a plaque, a game plaque. Thank you. We would also like to honor Christopher Fulton, if he's here tonight. Congratulations, city champions.
Thank you, Kate. Next up, we would like to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Middle School. Please, when I call your names, just start to walk up. Jonathan Christian. Kavon Bartley. Cavron Bartley. Trajan Gamble. Richard Ayala. Alfred Malave. All right. Devon Buford. Damar Artis. Daquan Nelson, Shakur Weaver. The championship winning team was coached by Coach Sherry Hall. Thank you. We would also like to present Coach Sherry Hall with a game-winning plaque. In honor of Women's Month, we had two coaches, two female coaches that coach boys' teams. So in honor of Women's Month, let's, let's give it up for that. Also want to honor one of the coordinators for MLK, Ms. Leah. Baranowskis, there you go. Ms. B, Coach B. Thank you very much. And again, I would also be remiss if we did not honor uh, and thank uh, Dr. Doreen Crawford of MLK, and also thank and honor Dr. Kitsia Ferguson of Capital Prep. Again, we do appreciate your leadership and uh, making sure that we have a uh, great sports program. So congratulations to both teams, championship teams, and congratulations to all of our sports teams. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. My uh, report is going to be condensed. One minute. So I have uh, three items that I'd like to report on, although the report that the written report that you all are going to get are, is much um, longer, and it will also be available to the public. We're going to post it as well. Um, the first uh, area of reporting is around our Next Generation Accountability Report. You do have a copy there of a presentation. I will not go into all of the details of the presentation. I'll actually give you a summary. Um, so on February 22nd, the Connecticut State Department of Education did release the fourth year of accountability results for Connecticut districts and schools. Uh, the Next Generation Accountability Report, what we call NGAR, results um, for each school contribute to our district's overall progress and rating. The results of the report also relate to the larger work of continuous improvement that we are doing in H uh, Hartford Public Schools. 
Although we use our own internal measures to assess student performance and progress, the NGARD does provide us with a comprehensive and more holistic view of the district and schools across a diverse range of indicators, allowing us uh, a different perspective while at the same time uh, allowing us to compare ourselves not only um, with other schools, among schools in the district, but also throughout the state. Overall, the district's 2017-18 uh, accountability index rose 1.8 uh, points from 57.8 in 2016-17 to 59.6 in 2017-18, uh, which is a growth uh, rate that is uh, on pace with the state as a whole and also with uh, our peer uh, districts. Um, the accountability, uh, the ac ac uh, academic indicators do show promising gains, um, while additional strategies are, are needed. Uh, if you uh, look in your presentation, you know we have 12 um, indicators, and overall we see that um, most, um, actually all of the um, academic outcomes. Uh, and those indicators did see improvements. Um, and the, what we call the culture climate, if you will, related indicators around chronic absenteeism, uh, attendance did um, show declines. And so um, there's work to be done there, which we already know those are areas of improvement for us and areas that we are prioritizing in our uh, district model of excellence. Um, when we look at the entire uh, picture, we know that accountability scores increased for 32 out of our 45 schools. Uh, so 71% of our schools um, had increases in their um, index. Hartford schools represented 11 of the 99 schools that made double digit gains across the state. Seven of those were Hartford neighborhood schools. Uh, some specific highlights, Asian Studies Academy at Belize School is among the top eight schools in the state with the most improvement. Uh, Expeditionary, uh, Expeditionary Learning Academy at Moylan earned the highest accountability score among our Hartford neighborhood schools. And Great Path Academy earned the highest accountability score among the high schools in uh, our district. Um, in, in your report there, you have a list of all the schools and where they fall within each category. This is um, a presentation in uh, detail that is going to be uh, presented in the uh, Teaching and Learning Committee. There's going to be a deeper dive uh, that happens there. Um, just wanted to remind us that, you know, it's important to understand that uh, school performance and progress on these uh, indicators do contribute, again, to the overall district standing. Uh, we are collectively responsible and accountable for these results at all levels of the organization. Uh, and you know, effective data teams that use relevant and timely data for continuous improvement uh, of teaching and learning are a strategy that uh, you know, is prioritized for us in the DME. And so throughout our work with the DataWise, we are strengthening our culture of consistent and continuous improvement. Uh, while we focus on evidence and while our internal data points uh, serve as the daily drivers, if you will, of our continuous improvement process, these indicators, these 12 indicators, represent the adequate annual growth uh, toward the state expectations. Um, during the March uh, uh, Administrators Institute, uh, we did engage with our principals um, in an initial review of these results, and school principals will continue uh, this work with their instructional leadership team so they can fully understand how the indicator results are, is going to inform uh, improvement and progress in their schools. The uh, second item I wanted to report is on the uh, Aspiring Leader Series, uh, which uh, kicked off uh, at the end of February, and it's the... Uh, Principal Pipeline Committee uh, kicked off the first workshop of our uh, series, and we have a team of cross-content and cross-departmental members that are working on developing our own uh, principal pipeline, work that is made possible through the support of the Wallace Foundation grant. And the work consists of uh, developing uh, a systematic and competency-based approach so that we can support 
um, building of leadership capacity within our current staff. So some highlights of the, uh, the program. Uh, the participating aspiring leaders are staff currently, Harford Public School staff that have the 092, which is uh, the administrator certification, who or who are enrolled in the 092 certification programs. We have over 100 staff members um, in Harford Public Schools who hold the 092 certification who are currently not in a leadership position. And so the workshop was attended by 43 participants who self-selected to attend uh, this voluntary series of professional learning. Um, and the uh, chief of schools explained the principal pipeline work. Uh, they explored the uh, principal job description for Harford Public Schools. And there was also a panel discussion with our current assistant principals and, and deans. Um, we were uh, fortunate to have representation in those that volunteered to participate in this series. Uh, we had high school, magnet, elementary, neighborhood, uh, school participation, um, as well as uh, various levels of experience on the 10-person uh, panel, which was uh, moderated by Executive Director Tyrone Richardson. Um, the next session is um, you know, at the end of, of this, uh, next week, actually. And um, participants were asked to plan out uh, change initiative projects that are connected to the DME. And so uh, we just wanted to highlight the work that is happening internally in terms of developing, um, you know, having the pipeline, but also all of those that participated in, in the series. Um, and lastly, my last um, report is uh, from the Office of Academics. and. Um, I know that I have a video that's gonna complement the report. Um, we continue our work on the seal of biliteracy, and um, we had information sessions that took place um, with high school principals, school counselors, parents, students, and we have currently 300 eligible high school students that represent uh, 27 languages. We've identified um, the students so that they can begin the language assessment process. And so we have a video that's entitled, I am bilingual, what is your superpower? Um, and we're gonna feature that. And I know that also here with us today, we have some students. And so because they are here and they're so proud of what we're going to highlight, I'm just gonna um, read out their names while also acknowledging the leadership of our Director of English Learner Services World and Dual Language Programs, Daisy Torres. So from Buckley, um, we have Gia De Leon, Joel Vera Seda, and Angela Lara. And we have from Harper Public High School, there they are, from Harper Public High School, uh, Shadik Baco and Joseph uh, Jimenez. And so I, I'll ask um, Christina if you can cue up the video. I am so pleased that Harper Public Schools will be honoring our graduating seniors this year with the Seal of Biliteracy. Seal of Biliteracy honors and recognizes students who obtain a level of proficiency in more than one language. The Connecticut Seal of Biliteracy is a seal that is affixed to a student's high school diploma and transcript. It provides immediate recognition of critical 21st century language and communication skills. Any graduating senior who meets the language arts requirements for graduation and demonstrates proficiency in another language through a state-approved assessment is eligible. In Hartford, the seal applies to over 27 different languages. The Connecticut Seal of Biliteracy aligns with our District Model for Excellence priority on teaching and learning for the development of skills, knowledge, and voice that students need to graduate ready for college and life. Biliteracy is beneficial for our learners culturally and academically, allowing them to develop into strong global thinkers who are prepared for the 21st century workplace. Our strategic operating plan works in service of the whole student, and that means honoring their strengths and maximizing their assets. I'm bilingual, what's your superpower? So I'm bilingual, what is your superpower? I am bilingual, what is your superpower? You take love, I keep love, so I go again and I'm bilingual, what is your superpower? I'm so bilingual, what is your superpower? I'm bilingual. What is your superpower? I'm bilingual. I'm bilingual. I'm bilingual. I'm bilingual. I'm trilingual. What's your superpower? 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 I'm trilingual. What's your superp
I'm triangle, what is your superpower? Na wangia luga tatu, mini nguvu yako. Ni mwangia luga tatu, ee nguvu chove. Or bilingual, what's your superpower? Bilingualism is definitely an asset for me. Um, it helps me to communicate very effectively with the community, uh, with my parents, uh, and definitely with my students. The seal of bilingualism tells scholars that I can read and write in two languages. The seal of bilingualism honors the language of my family. The seal of bilingualism allows me to compete in the global market. I'm a principal of a school that has a predominantly large population of students that speak 27 languages in the school because bilingualism is definitely a superpower. I'm bilingual. What's your superpower? Soy bilingual. ¿Cuál es tu superpower? I am bilingual. What is your superpower? Yo soy bilingüe. ¿Cuál es tu superpower? I am so proud to be bilingual. What's your superpower? Yo soy bilingüe. ¿Cuál es tu superpower? Ask how you can obtain the seal of biliteracy at Harper Public School. That concludes uh, my report. Thank you students for all that you do and for shining a bright light on your superpower. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Superintendent. And just like to say that it's our intention going forward to have a celebration every month because there's a lot of good things going on in our district and we don't often get enough opportunity to hear about them. And uh, now we move on to our student report. Thank you. Um, good evening. The Student Senate met on March 6th with Mayor Bronin and Superintendent Dr. Torres Rodriguez to present a rough draft of our research proposal. The Student Senate is researching how a student's home environment may result in a student missing school or not excelling in school. We would like to add a heart in the middle of the district's model of excellence to show that a student's well-being goes beyond the classroom. This heart will help to raise awareness and build strong community that includes partnerships and parent and neighborhood involvement. We also prepared statistics, facts, and personal stories on subjects including sex education, mental health, drugs, homelessness, and food programs. We worked with the mayor and the superintendent to further our research on these topics. With the mayor, we did we discussed ways in which we can get more students involved at every level of the community building process. This means that students are able to help lead the awareness for their peers and at their schools. In addition, the mayor is starting a 100 days of homelessness initiative to provide individuals and families homes. The Student Senate plans to be part of this and contribute to spreading awareness. We plan to meet with the superintendent at our next meeting to further our understanding on the community schools framework. And we also will be meeting with Tracy Avicali about sex, sex education and curriculum. After our April meeting, the Student Senate plans to have their research completed. And we would like to present what we have learned and our recommendations to the Board of Education, as well as the public. Also during our March 6th meeting, we met with Millie, the Executive Director of Hartford Parent University and Deborah Biglow. They joined us for our research presentation and invited the Student Senate to teach a class on mental health to parents in April. In addition, they invited the Student Senate to their monthly meetings as they would like to add student voice to their organization. They asked the Student Senate to help with encouraging students to come to their meetings as it helps students and parents educate each other as well as share policy ideas. Their plan is to have student representatives on their board where they will be able to voice their concerns and vote. The Student Senate is very excited to work with the Hartford Parent University and grow our partnership with the parents. This is a great step in our idea for our community engagement and building awareness for our students. Thank you for allowing me to give a report. 
And as I mentioned earlier, the committee reports are included in the agenda package, but I will offer the opportunity if any uh, board member wants to highlight anything from their committee meetings. Uh, then we move on to the business agenda. Item 4.1, administrative appointments, and the motion that the Board of Education approve the superintendent's recommendation to appoint Ashley Martin to the position of principal at Burr School. Madam Superintendent. Thank you. Uh, someone could, wait, don't walk. So, and, and I know uh, Chief of Schools Avila is going to join uh, Ms. Ashley, uh, Ashley Martin. In her first year at Burr School as acting uh, principal, Ashley, uh, or um, acting principal Martin, has proactively addressed many of the concerns and challenges that the school community has had around chronic absenteeism, discipline, academic rigor, and school culture. She works really hard to uh, be intentional in um, how she leads by example when um, operating, managing the school attendance team, for example, and leading professional uh, development sessions. Currently uh, at Burr, chronic absenteeism and suspensions are down for the first time um, in over a year. Her efforts to increase academic rigor are paying off as we see evidenced by the growth on the interim reading assessments. Ashley has put systems in place and holds herself, um, staff, students, and parents uh, accountable for student success. Uh, she's got some energy, uh, certainly a lot of passion that flows throughout the building. Uh, we're lucky to have her um, with us here. And so I'll turn it over to um, uh, Ms. Uh, Avila. Ms. Martin has served as acting principal of Burr Community School since July 2018. Ms. Martin comes to Hartford from Oakland, California, where she served as a teacher and principal from 2007 to 2018. In 2012, she was nominated and accepted into the New Leaders Aspiring Principal Program and received her administrative credentials in urban leadership. As a principal in Oakland, Ms. Martin led her school community through a district initiative, redesign process, and partnered with the School Design Lab to develop an innovative 21st century learning model. During her tenure, she has also served in several leadership and advocacy roles at the district level, including the Principal Advisory Committee, Budget Advisory Committee, and the CFO Interview Committee. Ms. Martin has an unwavering belief in our students' potential and a strong dedication to working in partnership with the community and families to ensure our students are equipped with the skills to be college and career ready. When speaking with students at Burr School, they say they love their new principal, she smiles, she's in classrooms, she really knows us. We're happy now. Uh, thank you, Ms. Avila. Uh, does anyone have any questions or comments for Ms. Martin? Uh, there being none, do I hear a motion? So moved. Uh, second? Second. I was moved and seconded. All those in favor of appointing Ms. Martin as principal at Burr School signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Well, good evening, Madam Superintendent and members of the board. Good evening. Um, it's such a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the opportunity um, to lead at Burr Community School and also in Hartford. It's been such a joy to work in partnership with our students, our families, and our staff um, to ensure that all students thrive. I'm very proud of the work that we've done so far this school year, um, and I'm just very grateful to have the opportunity to continue that work forward. Um, I have an unwavering belief that our school has the potential to be a top choice community school, and I want the community to know that I'm dedicated to ensuring that our school reaches that potential for all of our kids. 
Uh, again, thank you for your belief in me as a leader. I feel honored and blessed to have this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Item 4.2, approval of the closure of High School, Inc. As part of the district model of excellence and the re reconfiguration of our schools throughout the district, the board needs to vote on the closure of High School Inc. and Journalism and Media Academy to allow them to be part of the new Weaver High School, which is scheduled to open for the 2019-2020 school year. The motion right now is that the Board of Education approve the closure of High School Inc. Uh, Madam Superintendent? Yes, just want to reiterate what um, you referenced, uh, Chairman. Uh, this is in uh, alignment with the district model of excellence and the reconfiguration. We did have, um, as per board policy, the uh, hearing, um, and so um, it is in alignment with the work um, that we're doing. Uh, do I, you have a question, Ms. Oliver? Uh, a comment, if you will. Um, so, uh, as a proud Weaver graduate, um, class of 92, I was actually part of the community design team for High School Link, and um, one of the reasons I'm very excited is because the school always be belonged in Weaver, and I'm so happy to see it be back where it belongs and be back home. I was also part of the advisory board when we still were at Weaver, and it was called the Academy of Finance. So I'm just so proud and pleased. I know this is a technicality this evening, but I think that this is actually not a closure or end. This is actually the beginning, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing our students over on Granby Street. So thank you. Um, I just have some inquiries. I want to highlight Mr. Downs's um, concern about whether, if Weaver is not to be on schedule, can you talk a little bit more, give us some additional background on, you know, the guarantee around Weaver being open on time, um, why this, in fact, is like a technicality based on the DME vote that we took. Just a little more background would be helpful for to, like, allay some of those concerns. So we are, um, as of... Uh, today, actually, there was a meeting, though not related to Buckley, but I always ask every time I have an opportunity to engage with um, um, our CADIS, um, and so we are on schedule. The, uh, the plan is for us to open in um, August um, for our students um, with regard to uh, the technicality. So each of the schools now um, has um, is operating as their individual schools and with each um, of their respective individual codes. And so as part of the process, we know that there is going to be um, a merger under, uh, you know, it's, it's Weaver. Uh, however, I do want to clarify that, you know, students are still going to have their pathways um, to uh, uh, Ms. Oliver's point. Um, however, you know, we, we cannot have the two schools in, in, um, in, the, in, the, in the building with their each individual codes. This is going to be a shared uh, space, one school, um, and students will have um, the opportunity to uh, participate in, you know, the High School Inc., uh, the Journalism and Media Academy. They will have career and technical education opportunities, and of course, the early college experience and college credit um, opportunities. And so, um, yes, technicality, but also um, part of the larger design. Thank you for that. And in the event that Weaver doesn't happen to open on schedule, how does this impact, uh, what our decision this evening, how would it impact that? Um, at this point, um, we would have to keep our students where they are, which is at, at JMA. And it would have, you know, a ripple domino backward effect, given that uh, JMA is, the, the vacating of JMA uh, will be, you know, allowing, uh, you know, the middle school for Milner Middle School um, to open. And so, as, as we all remember, the DME um, relies on all of these pieces to move um, one after the other. Um, there was conversation last time with regard to some of the athletic pieces, uh, athletic areas not being um, done until uh, December. So they will not be um, able, you know, we can't use them until January, and that's still, that's still the case. But for the purposes of 
instructional programming um, August I, I in speaking to our construction crew there is um, they couldn't give me um, a, a major reason why we couldn't open in August but it would mean there is no movement um, of our middle school programs um, at the at the lower levels we would still have the movement but um, the the pause would have to be Miss Taylor for um, at the middle school, middle school and high school. Um, so I guess my question or my concern is that it's March and if we close it now, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out like what does it mean if we close it and Weaver doesn't open on time just because things happen? What would that mean? So as the uh, uh, formerly on the school building committee, one of the things is that they are already on a recovery schedule, the construction is, because of weather. So the blips in terms of the initial schedule, so it's on time, but we had a lot of weather and a lot of wet weather this winter, which um, didn't allow certain materials to dry on time. So they immediately went into a recovery plan. And the recovery plan, as of the last meeting, which obviously wasn't as recent as the superintendent's meeting, uh, we're actually ahead of the recovery schedule. So they've built that in as part of um, those issues. So their comments to us has been consistently, every single meeting, um, one of the public uh, uh, speakers spoke to this earlier at the building committee. We always ask where is Weaver on time in terms of that recovery, and we've actually been making really good progress. So I, one of the reasons I want to underscore that is because it's that recovery plan that's already in place that's actually proactively dealing with those issues. The other thing in terms of, and I know this wasn't your question just now, but the athletics in terms of that phase, which forgive me, I think it's phase three, I can't even remember at this point, um, it actually is on plan and was always scheduled to be December, so just want to make sure that's clear. <clears throat> it was never scheduled to be August. So we, right now, are completely on time. So I want to underscore that because my expectation, um, period, is that it, this building will op open on August. With regard to the, like, I, I kind of hear, like, a te technically, right, what would happen if it's not in would there be like a, another vote to keep the school open? Um, so I'm wondering if that's what you're... Yeah, I'm just wondering um, if it's, it's March and the school is slated to open in August, are we premature in our closure of, like should it be a little closer to the actual opening, like when we're a little more certain? It's a good question. You know, we're, we're, we have to look at it from um, a lot of different angles. One other angle that we're um, looking at it and have already made some decisions around, it's around staffing, right? We have per our bargaining, um, you know, un unit um, requirements and specific dates with regards to specific postings. And so those um, dates already, uh, you know, uh, came. And so we had to meet those deadlines. Um, could, are we, you know, early? early um, we didn't think of it that way potentially um, if we look at you know where we are today and then how many months we have um, till, till August but there is um, significant amount of planning on our end um, after after tonight's vote um, right like letting the state know uh, beginning some other internal processes and, and protocols with regards to students and records and all of those pieces um, and, uh one reason perhaps we can ask Ms. Wild, who now is sitting out there, that there is no date attached to the vote. So we're authorizing the closure, but we're not limited to the time. Is that correct, Ms. Wild? Correct. What, what say more about that so we can close it today and talk, talk to me more. I'm not we're not saying it. that we're closing it today. We're just giving the superintendent the right to close the school. At some point. At some point. And we are not limited as to date, and uh, Ms. Wild has confirmed that. And I, and I will reference the example from last year, which was Capital Community College Magnet Academy, that we closed um, last year as part of the DME, but still has a, a class. Their graduating class, their final class is, is still in there, or is still um, exists today, um, and will not finish until June but the vote took place last school year. 
I understand. Yeah. I have a question. My question is around the school code, because I remember in the school um, choice and facilities um, committee meeting, we went back and forth with the code. Were we going to reactivate the code? Were we going to do a new school code for Weaver? Um, and I'm thinking, I thought we had a consensus of what we were saying that meeting, but then I heard something different. So what are we doing around the school code? So we are still consulting with State Department of Education as to um, what um, any parameters, um, if any, but the initial, what we went to this, what we're going, what the conversation with SDE was around reenacting the old code, um, that's what we are hoping to be able to do. Okay. Dr. Vasquez Martins, do you have a comment? No, it, it is. Yes, we're leaning more towards um, the old Weaver Code. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Any opposed? Then the ayes have it. Item 4.4, .4, uh, which is similar, it is the closure. 4.3. Wait a minute. 4.3. That was 4.2. Oh, uh, 4.3, yes. The closure of journalism and media academy. And the motion is that the Board of Education approve the closure of the Journalism and Media Academy. Uh, Madam Superintendent. Again, this would allow uh, this school to be part of the new Weaver High School, which is scheduled to open um, in August. Um, it will also in, you know, be part of the academic and industry themes offering um, that are going to be offered at the school. Chair. Am I able to make reference to our speaker, um, Jason Farkason? Um, in regards to um, the new Weaver, um, we do have a very frustrated community that um, have been engaged in volunteering their time for years. Um, and the feeling is that they are not being heard. They actually put this plan together with um, with a lot of your staff um, being a part of many committees coming up with this plan and um, I just do want to highlight that though the the, um, the community that has been um, dedicated to this process um, at this point they do not feel that um, the plan that was worked on together is um, being respected get, giving any attention and they are looking for a voice in this um, because they are, um, the community is buying there. It's not only um, families, it's not, it's organizations. It's, you know, a, a variety of individuals who um, have dedicated um, years to this. And we're coming to a point where um, they felt working um, with your administration that this would be where the plan they would see and they would feel that all that they work for is going to come to fruition and they are not they do not feel that that's happening so i'm hoping that we are um, working um, with jason and those who um, have worked with him uh, many years on this um, to consider what they are doing to say whether it's yay or nay or a compromise, um, but they do feel that there is there is a wall up. So I'm hoping that um, that wall could be um, set aside. So um, the community, we need the community to um, be a part of this school for it to be successful, um, for it to start off on the right foot. So all those years of um, dedication, they are looking to see um, how that plan works with the plan um, that will actually happen um, for Weaver High School. 
Just to give an update as to um, where the process is, um, recommendations, um, I believe initially were non-negotiables as they were presented and, you know, we clarified that, um, they, you know, that it should be referenced as recommendations and we did have a meeting um, over the summer and requested that there be um, some alignment made through uh, with the district model of excellence and at that point our strategic operating plan. Um, uh, I believe, uh, Ms. Brody, you were at one of those meetings in which we had conversations about the alignment. Uh, since then, um, while it wasn't a request um, from the steering committee, um, I did request um, our internal team uh, to do what is called a crosswalk uh, among uh, the recommendations with um, our strategic operating plan and um, the recommendations um, speak to uh, best practices, if you will, in um, high school programming, where we are now, um, and I believe this was uh, discussed in one of the, com one or several of the committees, I, I um, teaching and learning um, had a conversation and uh, an exemplar was shared for one of the areas. Um, the team is working, I believe there was a meeting today, I'm hearing there was another meeting. I know there was a meeting last week and there was a meeting also today with uh, representatives of this steering committee um, to have those conversations. Um, I want to clarify that the recommendations, you know, relate to uh, management and operational pieces. And so we have to be, um, while um, taking into consideration the recommendations, knowing that, um, you know, these are management, there are management implications, some of which, you know, relate to staffing and bargaining units and those things. And so, um, you know, while working with the committee, um, our team is going to continue to clarify those. Uh, the other piece that um, I'll reference that connects somewhat to um, what you're referencing, uh, Ms. Brody, but also one of our speakers with regard to um, using the recommendations as a, um, I don't know if the word was model, but um, a, a, a word was used around like the whole district. Um, and I wanna um, just call to mind the work that we're doing with the Bar Foundation. As you all know, we did get the grant to do the deep research uh, with the Parthenon uh, uh, data analysts around high school programming and college career readiness. And so uh, I know that um, the piece missing, not in relation only to Weaver and the Weaver Steering Committee, but throughout the district was the data piece. Um, and we're looking back at the graduating class of 2016 to really understand, you know, uh, what were the programs in place, um, what was happening in our high schools in order to get us to where we are today and the graduating class of 2016, um, which, you know, less than 30% um, was ready to be successful in ninth grade. Um, and so I also want to make sure that, um, yes, we have recommendations, but there's also other work that's happening. And I'm hopeful that, um, you know, as our team in, engages and presents to the Teaching and Learning Committee the that crosswalk, that we're also able to overlay all of these other data findings that we have because, um, you know, when we think about school design, there is, as you're saying, Ms. Brody, the community engagement piece is so important to that work, but it also has to be, you know, balanced and triangulated with um, what, our, what the data are telling us so that we can design programs um, that are being responsive. So um, I wanted to also add that because I, I'm hoping that um, when the team continues, you know, their work with the Weaver Steering Committee, that there's an opportunity to kind of bring those two together, um, also with the district model of excellence. Um, the intention, you know, is not to, um, you know, it, it, I'm, it's unfortunate that that's the narrative or that that's the feeling, but, you know, we take that um, and we um, will continue to work on how to um, better improve um, the, the relationship or where, where the feelings are. We want to be um, inclusive while balancing the fact that um, um, many of the recommendations there actually do exist in the plan. So it's probably an opportunity to, I know it's a lengthy document, so, but to go through one by one by one. Um, I'm looking at Yvette because 
you're kind of going like that. And I know there was a meeting, and I've not been able to, to talk to you um, about the meeting today, but I know that you've been in communication with, with the team. But thank you for... Um, no problem. And I'll, I'll, my last comment will be um, that this, this plan that was um, developed was developed over time, and we're in March, and we're just starting to say, well, we're going to do a crosswalk. They've been trying to be engaged on that level for a while now, and I know that to be a fact. So I don't, at this point, we have to make, it would, it's, 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 it's almost like, is it time, is it enough time to say, Hartford Public Schools has come up with, with, with saying the, this is the direction we're going, um, the steering committee is saying, well, this is what we've come up with because it's not a brand, brand new document. So I guess the, um, what I'm saying is the frustration is now in March we're having these sort of conversations when they're trying to, they tried to come to this point months ago. So it is, is now, that, that's where the, the frustration um, didn't start with, you cannot adopt and accept these recommendations. The frustration was you're not engaging with us. Um, and it, and I, I totally understand collective bargaining. It's some things, because I've seen um, the plan myself, and it's some things that I've expressed, and, ha and I've been a part of their community meetings, and I've expressed some of those things just can't happen. Uh, in a perfect world, you could have all this, but because of systems that are in place, um, we have unions and things, it's just not happening. But it is some components that could have, and I, in my opinion, should have, um, there should have been some engagement um, um, with the steering committee um, and with the Hartford Public School staff way sooner than now. So there, um, we, can, we can actually provide if, if, um, additional information as to the engagement and um, the outreach that has happened throughout, and I know that the last conversation we had um, uh, in which you joined us, um, Ms. Brody, uh, we talked about uh, the connection to the DME that was not made, and so we um, requested that, um, you know, there be, to see if um, there were opportunities to make the direct alignment to the DME, and after that, um, there's been conversation at the committee, at the Teaching and Learning Committee as well, and so it's not work that is just starting, so I want to clarify that. Um, but I do know that there are many, many um, aspects of the work, and so, um, Yvette, I know that you're, you've been waiting to kind of add additional information. So um, I just want to validate the feelings, and that has been communicated, and we are working with a subcommittee of the steering committee. Um, that has been meeting with myself and Ms. Ms. Blackburg around next steps and around uh, creating and um, organizing a community meeting to one, give updates on the status of, of Weaver, um, on the facility as well as the next steps, and then as well as presenting the crosswalk and letting letting the community see the crosswalk and helping them understand where we need to fine tune certain areas, where it's directly aligned, where there's things that may not be as aligned, things that may happen maybe in year one or beyond that. And so we will, we, ha we met today, we met last week, we have been speaking to um, a small group of people and, and individuals around this to, to make sure that we keep the community informed and about how we're going to do that. And so we have planned, we have initial plans for a community meeting on April 4th. Um, that was just decided finishing today, and so we will get an invite as soon as possible. Um, so I just want you to know, though, that the outer community may still feel some frustration, um, and we are trying to address that as quickly as possible and to bring everyone up to speed so everyone knows where we are with Weaver. Can I, can I just add to that? So, um, Superintendent, you said something was going to be provided. Um, just a couple minutes ago, I can't remember what it is. Yeah, in the teaching and learning committee, we want the um, all of the pieces of the crosswalk. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it is a very lengthy uh, document. I know that um, we initially requested the crosswalk um, of the steering committee, um, and then 
um, we also decided to do our, our crosswalk with regard to all of our initiatives, all of our strategies that are happening as well? Sure, so I think it would be really helpful for the board, right, as um, because being on the board, it, it, it feels like you're getting information from from both sides, and both sides um, sometimes are, are 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 aligned, and sometimes don't seem to be. It might be really helpful for us, or at least for me. Let me speak for myself. It might be helpful for me if maybe you guys can provide us eventually with a summary of of what the process has been like, the communication process between the steering committee around this conversation, right, um, from beginning to end, right, till basically today. Give me give us a summary of that whenever you can, not, not now, obviously, and maybe, right, because uh, I think um, he also mentioned the fact that supposedly, um, and, and I say supposedly just because I can't, I don't know, um, but that changes were made to the to the to the design of the of the building um, that were not that, that were not part of the um, original design, that changes were made to the original design. So maybe if there have been, and I'm not saying that there were, but maybe if we can be provided a list of any changes that were made to the design of the building from, I think the la last phase that we voted on was phase four, may, might have been, right? Because that was the uh, the field house and that stuff, right? So maybe from phase four, from that vote on, if any changes have been made to the design of the building that the board might not have been made aware of, right? I don't know that they exist, but if they do, maybe we can get a list. Um, that would be really helpful. So we will um, have, a, we can certainly have a presentation by um, Arcadis. Sure. You know, they, they've, usually come and give updates sure. so we can we can do that um, that kind of sits outside of the weaver of uh, this part of the weaver steering committee and, and the recommendations with regard to the programmatic uh, recommendations and um, if I also may make a recommendation I would state that um, with the smaller committee um, just ensure that they're speaking to everyone because um, just again if we have individuals who are meeting with you all and the staff, and then there's others that feel that we're not meeting, that, that poses an issue. That means that something's not right, um, because there were thousands of Weaver steering committee meetings, and they were able to congregate and gather. So that means that there has to be some missing piece that we're missing for individuals to not know that there was a meeting last week and that, that there was a meeting today. So that means there's some breakdown of communication. I don't know if it's on our end, um, or if it's on the outside, but it just making sure that we bring those who are, I hate to use the words supposed to be at the table, but those who have like the voice that um, are a part of that steering committee, that committee, excuse me, that they are aware of the things that are going on um, and making sure that their voice is heard. I do know that we will not be able to have every single individual in the meeting or every single individual going to do tours and things of that nature. However, if we have those who have kind of been the, the voice and the active voice, ensuring that they are the ones who are a part of that, because to know that you have a, had a meeting today and then we had individuals come in today, that means there is a breakdown of communication in some form or fashion. So this is why it's important for us, and I know that you're working on a larger uh, Com community meeting that was our um, there's a request that we actually have um, and we're hoping that that the members um, you know are helpful in that process nonetheless we want to move on with having a larger community conversation as to where are we you know what are the what you know the crosswalk um, and um, we're trying to find ways to get the the, the larger word um, we certainly don't want to have anyone feel like they're um, not part of the conversation but um, you know, perhaps we should not assume, um, and I'll, we'll own that, right? We should not assume that the, that this subcommittee that we're speaking to is um, sharing the information, and so that's something for us to think about. Um, actually, um, as you as you as you reference that, um, I know that um, you've uh, been diligent, Ms. Avila, in trying to schedule a meeting for quite some time, um, and um, while it's been received. Um, you've also had to kind of wait because um, other people um, wanted to be part of the meeting. And so, um, yeah. so we want to be, we, we're trying to kind of, you know, be mindful and, and responsive. Absolutely. I just think it's, a, it, it's more of an intentional, even if it's a follow-up email, just to the masses of like, this is what we discuss. Because again, we don't want to assume 
that information is being trickled down and if, and if it's not. Because at the end of the day, we're going to have to own it at, um, and with respect as far as communication. It will come from, oh, board is not doing this and board is not doing that. So if we just own it and just kind of do follow-up information and just send it out to the masses of like, just like how we do our public information, that maybe that will kind of show the diligence of what's going on. And I also will recommend during that open forum that we do talk about the pathway into Weaver as well, because I know that is also a community concern. I know we're, we're, we're kind of diving away from where we are with respect to the approval of this, but just ensuring that the, because that's a, a big thing as well of how we're feeding, because as we're closing these schools, we're talking about how we're feeding kids into Weaver. And I know that's a big concern as far as the community as well. So ensure that that's a part of that community conversation as well. And as uh, Ms. Clark pointed out, we are straying away from the item <laughs> on the agenda, which is the vote on the closure of J JMA. So perhaps, uh, Madam Superintendent, you can commit to giving us an in-depth up update of the status on, on Weaver, and we could proceed with our vote. Uh, is there a motion to uh, close JMA? Do you have a question? I, I just have a quick point for Chair. I apologize. I was just going to say, is there any way we could use the website as a way of keeping this stuff transparent? Yeah. yeah, for all of our buildings and things like that, even if it's high level and then say, hey, this is how you can get more information, because the same thing is happening with MLK. Those are not the only two schools, obviously, that things are happening at. Yeah. And um, it is unfortunate that there's such um, anxiety and anxiousness and frustration in the community where I know so many people have worked so hard uh, for many of us for years, as was noted earlier, um, who have been involved from a community standpoint. So that was my last point. Thank you, board chair. I have a comment about JMA though. Um, my other quick comment about JMA is um, as a proud on-air DJ for 89.9 QFM for more than 25 years until I was um, had the opportunity to sit on this board and no longer could actually volunteer my time at the radio station. I was very proud of it and and um, really hopeful that it was more integrated, the radio station, into the actual learning and use as ex experiential learning and application, et cetera. I did see that movement in the last few years over at, at JMA. I'm very hopeful that that's going to continue over at Weaver, uh, Weaver High School building. It has always been used as an educational tool as well as a community tool. So um, my understanding is good work is going in in terms of the technology side of it, and I do hope that well, we're able to really push on the programming side of it to make sure it's, it's embedded in the curriculum. So that's all. Thank you. Is there a motion to close JMA? So moved. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Item 4.4, .4, contract amendment approval, Joe Brenner, LLC. Uh, district contract with Joe Brenner, LLC was executed in September, but as work continues, additional school were added and additional materials and costs were incurred. Uh, and the motion is that the Hartford Board of Education authorize the superintendent to amend the contract with Joe Brenner, Inc for an additional $105,102.70 for the term delineated in the contract ending June 30th, 2019. Madam Superintendent. Yes, and I'll ask Dr. Sellers and Joe Brummer, who I see here, um, to speak with regard to uh, the amendment and the rationale um, and the need for the expansion. I know that this is work that we are committed to doing and that aligns with um, our district priority around school culture and climate. Uh, with regard to reducing our chronic absenteeism, making sure that our students feel safe and valleys. So there are lots of connections, but in terms of the expansion, if you can just give us an overview. Absolutely. Um, good evening, board members. Um, I believe some documents have been shared with you uh, that sort of give an overview of our um, RAP snapshot as of March. So it gives you an idea of the cohort expansion and um, these additional um, funds would allow us to expand into cohort six. And I hope, Christina, do they have that? Oh, it's in the board docs, okay. All right, what we give you um, 
again, cohorts one through six, the school membership, um, the year that they're in, um, the members of the, uh, the RAP team from each school, and then there's also some data. We show some of our um, ISS and OSS data at those schools, just to sort of, like I said, give you an idea of where the schools are now. Um, some of the schools are in year, you see cohort one is in year two of their implementation, cohort two in year two, cohort three, this is their implementation year, and cohort four and five are in their training year, and you can see the training dates there, and then cohort six is the cohort we'd like to add. So um, we're, um, we're hopeful that we'll get a favorable uh, vote by the board tonight, and we're happy to entertain any questions that you might have. The, the only thing I remember, Mr. Chair, was uh, I think there was a conversation around these, uh, and, and I think it might have been, uh, I don't want to put them on the, on, uh, put too much pressure on you right now because I'm catching you off guard, but Dr. Vasquez Matos, uh, but wasn't there, uh, uh, there isn't necessarily costs that we are, uh, how, do, how does the, the cost um, relate to this, right? Because I think we said that these costs were already right. within the budget, right? Correct. And it's not that we are adding an additional X amount onto the, the, the budget that we adopted last year, correct? correct. This is money so, that's within the budget. We're not looking, we have the money. Right, so we're not, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. So that's correct. There's no, there's no line item increases. These, uh, these budget, uh, these line items are already budgeted for, um, um, in, in Dr. Seller's division as well as professional learning specifically for this type of work, so we did not have to increase a line item. They were already um, or, or Or take money away from anything else, That's right? Correct. That's, yes. All right, thank you. That's it. That's all right. I have. No, excellent question. Yeah. So the issue is simply that we need to amend the budget to reflect these costs. To increase the PO, correct. Any other questions? Motion to adopt, Mr. Chair? Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Great. Thank you for your support. <laughs> Item 4.5 is the first reading of policy 5124. Confidentially have the and access to education records. Uh, this is first reading, so it does not require a vote. And no comments. Okay. And we move on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion to take up the consent agenda as one item? So moved. Second. Uh, it's been moved and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Is there a move to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Motion passes. We have one or two. Um, through you, Mr. Chair, I, we didn't do it. Yes, we did not say it aloud, but Ms. Ms. Santiago does have the roll call. Thank you, Ms. Clark. <laughs> uh, we have an executive session uh, on a personnel matter and attorney client privilege communications and uh, all the items in here, and pending litigation update. 
So, is there a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. So we are in executive session, and we are taking attorney Julia Wilde and attorney Leander Dolphin. And the Madam Superintendent, yes. Hello, I am your proud superintendent, Dr. Leslie Torres Rodriguez. I am leading the crucial process of reimagining and restructuring our school district. I need you, all of you, to be significant partners in our process. We are doing this imperative work to deliver on our commitment to ensure improved student outcomes and equitable access to resources for each and every one of our beautiful and capable students. When we have completed this process together, we will hold in our hands a stronger, more equitable school district designed to serve all students well, a plan built by the entire community that will benefit the entire community. We at Hartford Public Schools are coordinating the process, but you, the community, families, students, teachers, and all of our stakeholders are the voices and the minds that must inform this work. By sharing your thoughts, you will help to co-create our district model. Our work together, which takes place over the coming months in community meetings with families, partners, and schools, will culminate in the presentation of recommendations for district models for excellence, different ways in which the district can be reimagined while ensuring the health and viability of our neighborhoods and continuing to provide access to opportunities and services for our families and students. For news about meetings and ongoing updates on our process, please visit our district website at www.hartfordschools.org. Hey, is there a motion to come out of executive session? So, so a second. All those in favor of coming out of executive session, signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. We are out of executive session. Uh, something came up about our vote on the uh, consent agenda. So we will need to take a second vote as to the consent agenda. Do we have a motion to take a second vote on the consent agenda? So Second. All those in favor? Si signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. So is there a motion to take the consent agenda as one item? So moved. Second. Any objections? Any objections? Aye. And your objection? I would like to um, pull out consent agenda 5.4. Okay, she has moved to remove 5.4 from the consent agenda. Uh, is there a second for that? Yes, separate vote. You can take it as a separate vote, yes. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. So all those in favor of taking up 5.4 as a separate item, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. Is there a motion as to item 5.4? So moved. Second. All those in favor of uh, item 5.4, signify by saying aye. 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 And any opposed? No op um, opposing, but I would like to abstain from that vote. Okay. So Ms. Clark is abstaining from the vote, but I believe the ayes have it. Now, is there a motion to take up the rest of the agenda as one of the consent agenda as one item? So, so a second. So moved. All those in favor of taking the rest of the agenda, excluding 5.4, as one item, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Is there a motion to accept the consent agenda accepting item 5.4? So moved. Second. 
All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Do the ayes have it? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved, sir. Aye. All, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> we are adjourned. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>